In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut and paste the pieces of Color Aid for the Simultaneous Contrast project. So here I'm starting out with the colors I've selected for my three colors look like four version of the project. And from here, um, I'm going to teach you some best practices for cutting and pasting with your X-Acto knife and your rubber cement. So what I need is my self-healing mat. My ruler and my exacto knife and my rubber cement. First thing I'm going to do is cut the ground colors. So this pink and this blue one, um, the minimum size requirements for these is going to be three inches by four and a half inches. That's exactly a half sheet of the color aid. So I'm going to flip it over and I can either use the measurements on my mat, which is helpful, or my ruler. I'm going to use the ruler in this case. So three inches by 4.5. You can see that the width of the sheet is 4.5 inches approximately. I guess it's a little bit smaller, but that's fine. So let's just do half of the sheet. And then I'm going to measure three inches. So I'm going to measure three inches on each side. Do the same on this one. Now the nice thing about these mats is that you can use the lines to line it up and make sure that you're cutting straight. Okay, now I'm going to, these have a nice non-slip back, backing. I'm gonna line the ruler on here. And now I always use the ruler to cut with my X-Acto knife so that I am um, not cutting my fingers and also to keep it straight. So now when you're cutting this, you don't wanna push down really hard. Just run the X-Acto knife along the ruler very gently. And so I usually do like maybe two passes and then you'll see it just pulls away really easily. There's one of my ground colors. Now I'll do the same for the other one. Okay. And same thing, light touch, make sure my fingers are out of the way. Two passes, there we go. Now I have my two ground colors. And then now I'm gonna cut my key color and I need two of these. And my recommendation for the size to make the key color is three quarters of an inch by one inch. And since I have the factory cut edges, I'm gonna use those to my advantage. So I'm gonna measure three quarters of an inch. And then I'm gonna do another three quarters of an inch. And then one inch. I'm 
going to do the one inch cut first. So again, using my mat here, get the lines straight. I always want to draw the any marks on the back of the sheet because it's hard to get them off of the front color. Make sure I have my other three quarters of an inch. So now I need to glue these onto my Bristol and I need to glue the two key colors on the center of these and I can choose whichever way I feel like they fit together the best and get my sheet of Bristol. Okay, now I'm going to glue these on my half sheet of Bristol and I want to make sure that I'm positioning them evenly and in the center as much as possible. I'm gonna end up with a border of about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, about three quarters of an inch on each side. So let's mark that. Can always erase these little pencil marks on the Bristol later. And then on the other side, I'm going to have, yeah, it's about an inch and a half. I can always cut this down more if I want to make it three quarters all the way around. Okay, great. Now to glue these, the best thing to do is if you have a spare sheet of paper, you're gonna put them upside down on the square sheet of paper, get your rubber cement, and wipe off the brush a little bit. And then you wanna get a good amount on the back, but not too much extra. So I usually try to go over the edges a little, but have it be relatively thin and everywhere. There's a couple different techniques for using rubber cement, but this is the one that I find the most effective. Definitely flipping it over and having the spare sheet of paper is helpful for getting the edges. Okay. Now I have my little dots there, so I can place it. I'm 
You want to kind of press it down on the edges. You can always put a little extra later if you have an edge sticking up or something like that. Now, after you put the glue on, you need to transfer it to the paper pretty quick because it dries pretty fast. All right, so you want these to be touching for the greatest illusion. This one's popping up a little, so I'm gonna put a little extra on the back, and you always wanna put it on the Colorade and not on the Bristol. Try to avoid getting it on the front of the Colorade if you can. Corners are being stubborn, so I'm putting a little extra on there. All right, now for the key colors, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to put them upside down on my spare sheet of paper, my scrap. I'm going to put the rubber cement on the back. And then for this one, I'm just going to eyeball it a little bit. You can measure it if you're concerned, if you want to get it perfect. Glue that one down. Glue this one down. If you're going to measure it, I would just measure the centers and put a little dot and then you'll be able to place that pretty well. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And then if there's any parts that pop up, I'll glue them again. But that's what it should look like when you are finished to turn it in. Good amount of white space around, the two ground colors touching, and the two key colors in the center. You can see I got a little bit of rubber cement on the front of both of those two key colors. And that is what your rubber cement pickup eraser is for. So you have to wait until it's completely dry, but then you get to use this little rubber square. And after it's dry, this will completely remove, so you can see it's not dry yet move that around, but this will remove any extra rubber cement like magic.